You wrote The Handmaid's Tale over three decades ago, and people are calling you a fortune teller for that, and we'll get to that in, in a little bit. But now we have the Testaments, so we get to find out what actually happens to Gilead and some of these characters that we've been so invested in. Talk to me about why why now? Why pick up the story so many so many years later? For years they said write a sequel and I said no because I thought they meant and they did mean and I meant continue the story of the main character. Pick it up from where you yeah, left off. Yeah, which I could not have done. Um, why not? Well, you just can't do it again. You just can't recreate that. And also, we seem to be moving away from the structure of Gilead, the Cold War ended in 1989, and then for a decade everybody said, let's go shopping, end of history. <laughs> uh, <laughs> turned out not to be true. And then there was 9-11, which of course frightened people. And when people are frightened, they start getting ready to trade in some civil liberties for somebody who will make the trains run on time. Of course, the Handmaid's Tale, the book, got a new life with the TV series. The Handmaid's Tale, the book, got a new life in the two Obama elections because of the things that Republicans were saying. Mm. So in each one of those elections, you saw an uptick, and you also saw quite a few online memes. So it's almost a barometer of people's <laughs> fears and concerns. Yeah, as are, as are the sales of 1984. Uh -huh. So what did they share? They're both about totalitarianisms. They're both about autocratic rule. They're both about uh, controlling free speech. Uh, so yes, then we have November 9th, 2016, when everyone in the Handmaid's Tale TV series, which we'd already started filming, uh, woke up in the morning and said, we're in a different show. Not because the show changed, but because the frame around the show had changed. Instead of, look what we avoided, it was, this might actually be coming our way. Minus the outfits, but nonetheless. Although we're seeing the outfits, we too. We are seeing the outfits a lot, but as a protest symbol. And they're a brilliant protest symbol for a television age, um, or a video age, because um, you can be protesting inside a legislative chamber, and nobody, nobody can throw you out because you're not saying anything. Nobody can throw you out because you're dressed immodestly. You're, but you're there, you're visible, and everybody knows what you mean. I do think one of the more frightening things to audiences, and this is what sticks with me, is the boiling frog metaphor that sort of is woven throughout the book. So if you, if you put uh, the frog in a gradually heating bathtub, it doesn't notice at first that things are getting hotter. We could use that about the climate crisis. <laughs> We, quite literally. we may quite literally be in the gradually heating bathtub, except it seems to be heating more rapidly than people said uh, a little while ago that it would. So, so things, things can change gradually until you hit that point when they tip suddenly, you hit the tipping point. And if you study the build up to various um, overthrows, revolutions, uh, advent of dictatorships, etc. You you can trace that. This book, this story, this universe is not just a dystopian fiction. Everything in it is is based in real world events and real atrocities that people have witnessed. Can you speak to how well, you wrote why this? I did that. Yeah. Okay, I did it because I didn't want people saying, "My goodness, you have a weird, twisted imagination. Where do you come up with this stuff?" Um, so, so I didn't want to invent um, no dragons. Mm -hmm. And everything in the books has reference from real life. Um, so real history, real things that people have done, real things that people are doing now. And it's not the mice doing it, it's people doing it to other people. I mean, it is pretty remarkable that this series came at this point particular moment. What's it been like for you to experience that? On the one hand, seeing the, sh the show and, and the story now, and, and book sales have increased as well, so seeing the story reach so many more people, at the same time knowing that the reason that story is reaching so many more people, the reason 
people, it's resonating so much is not necessarily a positive one. Exactly. It's a, it's a strange position to be in. So when people ask me that question, which they do, I say, well, if I could trade it, <laughs> um, I would, but that, that is not the choice that has been given to me. I can't cancel reality. So given that reality is what it is, it's a good thing um, that they've done such a terrific job on the show. Now that The Handmaid's Tales, for some people, become a little it's, bit too real. Yeah, it's not real yet, or you and I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation, because <laughs> you wouldn't have a job. I think you now have this burden, though, where people ask you, how do we avoid becoming <laughs> The Handmaid's Tale? Well, this is, after all, the United States, with, with a long history of, of democracy and civil actions. So I think people are, have become motivated to be um, politically active and maybe vote next time. Vote while you can. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.